Hmm. When I was a young graphic designer, I'm still kind of young now, but uh, when I was young, I had a lot of teachers who were incredibly puzzled by me. He always said, Eddie, you're too enigmatic, kind of puzzling. You're always working off on a tangent. And why is that? And what I would do is I would take a concept that they had set up within a brief and I would basically go off-roading on it. And they always wondered why. And it was because I always thought that their ideas for me were all about being content. So the, the final idea or the final solution would actually be kind of happy. And so I was like, no, I don't want to do that. I want to be excited. I want to be joyful. And I want you to come with me on my particular journey. And so I want to start off on that, where with a concept, you start with ideas. And you kind of flow through, and you're picking up a particular steam. Those ideas start to percolate. They start to increase. And you're like, OK, I'm on, I'm on the road in a particular framework that my teachers have actually stated. And then you get to the particular pinnacle, that you've solved the problem, particularly for a client, my, my case. And you say, OK, I'm satisfied. I'm content. But with me, you sort of start off on that sort of narrow, flat line of the, of the concept. And then you start to percolate the ideas, and you start to off-road. You go off on a tilt. It's because I want to be able to create the process that excites me as a person, not because I want to be content with a framework that somebody's given me. And one of the things is you're still going to come up with a similar solution, but yet you were, you were overly happy, you were joyous, and you know what? So was your client. So were the people that you thought that, were, that just wanted something that was going to be satisfactory and it could do the job. So in a, in a sense, we need to take another path. We're always on this consistent path. And I want to talk about a project that dealt with that a few years back. The DDC came to me, and this is a department of design and construction in New York City, and they wanted me to design a manual. And I was like, okay. So I went to their offices, and I sat in a room full of specialists that deal with plumbing. And I thought to myself, uh, do, you really do, do you really need a graphic designer? I'm not quite sure. Because they were talking about dry urinals. And I was like, I don't know what a dry urinal is. But it sort of impressed me. And I wanted to you know, continue the process. And I, 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 at first, I thought, oh, no, this is going to go down that particular path of just being consistent, being content because they wanted an 80-page um, spiral-bound piece. And I was like, oh, man. But I started listening to what they had to say. And did you know that New York City uses about a billion gallons of water a day? It is amazing amounts of water. And that water has to travel 120 miles down from upstate New York. Now, for a graphic designer, you're kind of listening to all this stuff, and you're like, hmm, this is interesting. They actually enjoy talking about water, and then it flows into you know, commercial buildings, into potential um, dry urinals for efficiency. And I was like, OK, well, I can do something with this. And I continued to listen. And at the end of that meeting, I said, you're not going to get an 80-page spiral-bound book. You're going to get a Bible. 
and they kind of looked at me. And it was at that point where that co the concept was there and it started to percolate and I started to go off-road. And I wanted them to come with me. And they did. And I, pro we, I produced this book so over three years. It took three years and th it's 300 pages about water efficiency in New York City commercial buildings and dry urinals. And the thing about this book is that in referencing all the different terminologies for architects to use, for civil engineers to use, for specialist plumbers, it's all there, the kit and caboodle. But incredibly enough, your mother could read it too. And that's what I really wanted to produce, something that was encouraging others to look at something such as this. The system that we came up with, many systems within the book were very um, hyperlinking within the structure of the book, very referential, a lot of infographics. We even created a uh, strategy for lead-based um, water efficiency tabling, which you actually can see here. There's all these sort of droplets. And so we're like, ah, this is really boring. Oh, there's multiple colors. But those colors actually meant something. They were very instructive, very informative. And they, the great thing about it is that the client wanted us to keep on going with it. They were kind of excited about it. But one of the things that sort of brought it up to, to the, the effort of enjoyment and excitement was the, the type of human qualities we try to put into it. And sometimes you sort of see in diagrams, you know, people just standing there like this and talking. And we were like, bollocks to that. <laughs> bollocks to that. I want somebody showering and sitting on the toilet seat taking a dump. <laughs> As you can see here. So washing, taking a shower, washing their car, taking a piss. And so, you know, <laughs> for the government, a local government book of 300 pages, I was like, in, I was so excited that they were happy that I had somebody pissing in a dry urinal, damn it, because <laughs> it made it work. And that's what was really impressive about this whole process. The whole idea that I can take a dump and the compost system is down below, that's, I'm comfortable, I'm comfortable with that process. What they did, they asked us to do it again. They were excited about this particular aspect of design and process. And so we, we designed a book called Geothermal Heat Manual. I mean, <laughs> come, come on. They were like, oh, God, not another one. OK, we'll try again. And we took that information. And the whole thing is that we don't only, graphic, graphic designers, we don't only read that content, we actually believe that content. And that's an important thing for us to do. And so we started to peel off and do that again in regards to people digging, um, but people started looking at other people in regards to distant structures. And it was sort of impressive. But what I'm trying to get at is that this is one example of many in regards to the idea of taking that off-road approach to whatever you're doing. It doesn't have to be design, you know? As Robert Frost basically says, road not taken. That's an important aspect to our lives. We are always on this path of, of processing, of being very robotic, of not achieving our our inner goals, our inner spirit. We've got to get off-road, damn it. We really do. And that's what I have to say. Thank you.